First of all, the kids in my neighborhood have decided to pick right now to have an extremely aggressive game of tag, so if you hear screaming, I'm so sorry, that's what's going on. Hi all, this week I wanted to take some time to review Margaret Atwood's new book, which is a highly anticipated, kind of a surprise, and very, in my opinion, needed sequel to The Handmaid's Tale that she just released. In this review, I'm only going to be giving very, very mild spoilers. I'm going to skip any major reveals or anything that you aren't likely to have heard already. If you haven't read The Handmaid's Tale, it's a classic dystopian novel about a very fundamentalist Christian government that pretty much takes over the United States. It, it's a country, it's Gilead, it's a country that is basically where the United States is now. In that country, people of color, LGBTQ people, non-believers, which is anyone that doesn't follow this very particular strict version of Christianity. Basically anyone who isn't a white male straight follower of this religion. It's considered evil and an outsider and subhuman pretty much. Women are essentially property in this they're basically slaves they have very few purposes they can serve and they have no control over their lives or what they do handmaids are women who are considered unfit to be wives normally from some moral failing but who are still fertile will be essentially lent to any powerful family where the woman can't conceive and it's always woman's fault instead of the man who can't conceive in this government's mind every month there's a ceremony where the husband rapes the handmaid until she gets pregnant and then her child is taken from her and given to this couple it's not a happy place also to be clear i've not watched the show the handmaid's tale it does follow the handmaid's tale and then goes beyond that story and what happens in this book is not identical to that this takes place 15 years after the events of the handmaid's tale there's still room for what happens in the series to be true and to happen in between the two things. I personally haven't watched the show, so I'm not going to speak on that very much. I was so happy when I found out this book was coming out. I didn't expect a sequel. I don't think, I never thought it was necessarily needed. Of course, I wanted more. Where The Handmaid's Tale ends, it leaves you very much wanting more and with a lot of questions, but in a way that a lot of good literature does, especially a lot of good dystopian novels. But honestly, in the present political climate, like as soon as the 2016 election happened, I wanted a sequel badly. It's almost like, wanting advice from a parent or some kind of a parental figure to tell you what to do and to guide you and to help because I felt so lost and Margaret Atwood felt like that figure to me in many ways. I was looking to her for guidance and and so finding out that this book was coming out was kind of like getting an unexpected letter from some combination of a mom and Gandalf to tell you what to do. <laughs> Like I said, this book takes place about 15 years after The Handmaid's Tale ends. Uh, one of the major questions a lot of people had leading into the sequel was if it was going to be Offred's story continued. This is not Offred's story. She's not the narrator. She does not, she's not a major character in this novel, but she is a very looming presence. She's become almost this mythic figure on both sides. Instead, this novel focuses on the narratives of three different women. There's Agnes, a young girl within Gilead, who lives in a powerful family and is just about to reach the age of maturity where she'd be married off. There is Daisy, who's an anti-Gilead activist who lives in Canada. And the third is Aunt Lydia, who readers of the book or watchers of the show will know as one of the most terrifying, powerful aunts. The aunts are women who are not wives, they are not mothers, they are not handmaids. They are women that are sort of the female political leaders. They are in charge of educating and punishing and controlling the rest of the female population. They also are in charge of the Pearl Girls who are missionaries that go outside of Gilead to try to find new women to bring in, primarily to find additional mothers and to up the population. The three narratives are woven together in a very almost Victorian way. They're witness accounts and testimonials and they really bleed together beautifully. They're three very distinct voices, but they don't, it's not jarring to jump in between them. They flow very naturally and Margaret Atwood is a master at these different voices. It's incredible that she is nearly 80 and can still write in the voice of a 15, 16 year old girl so perfectly. One major difference between The Handmaid's Tale and The Testament is that while The Handmaid's Tale is very atmospheric and poetic, and not very plot heavy. The Testaments is extremely focused on plot. It's very, very plot heavy. It's very fast moving. I typically prefer atmospheric novels, but for the theme and message of this novel, I think the plot focus is very important and very useful and works as a great tool. The way the three narratives are broken apart and woven together also contributes to the speed of the read. It's a very, very fluid read. It's very quick. It's continually engaging. They bounce off each other perfectly. It's just a fantastic way to keep the narrative flowing and keep everything moving. It never, ever drags. 
It is a little less shocking than The Handmaid's Tale, partly because so many of the really graphic, horrific scenarios that are present in this novel we've already read about in The Handmaid's Tale. And also just with our present climate and our awareness of the world, it feels a little harder to be that shocked. But it's clearly not meant to be a shocking. It's not primarily a warning novel. It's not so much as The Handmaid's Tale was a this is what could happen. Instead, it's a guide as to what to do if it does happen and how to fight back and how to try to handle it and survive. And not only survive, but to try to make the world better for other people, even if it's just other people after you. The novel is focused on telling a little bit more about how Gilead came to be, how it went from a slow progression of freedoms being stripped away and to the complete totalitarian regime that it becomes. It explores how a American woman who is used to freedom, who is used to being seen as an equal, can start to accept this new lifestyle, which is very difficult to read. <laughs> That's not to say the novel isn't harsh. It's extremely harsh. It's very graphic. There's a lot of violence, sexual and otherwise. And in some ways, it's almost more disturbing or was to me. It deals very much with very ordinary people that are extremely relatable. But because of that, the things they go through are also very relatable. Whereas the sexual assaults and the tortures in The Handmaid's Tale are so barbaric and feel over the top even though they they're all based on things that have happened in, in reality in the testaments the, many of the things that happen are extremely common in our society right now there are things i've been through friends i've had have been through almost everyone i know has been through something like this or had or knows someone closely who has been through something like this and honestly as a survivor of some of these things it was really difficult to read it especially in especially in a novel where the world is meant to be extreme and terrifying and overwhelming, to then have these experiences that I've been through to be presented as also something overwhelming and terrible and awful to go through. It was hard and also extremely validating, but because of it, it's very disturbing. That idea is also played off on the cover art. On the cover, you have a handmade but with a non-Gilead resident in the middle. And on the back, you have a non-Gilead resident with a handmaid hidden within her, which is terrifying. It plays with that whole idea of how easy it is to become a completely controlled person, but it also plays with the idea that you can still work to no longer be that kind of person to fight back, that both of those are within each person. It's both terrifying and inspiring, which is really what this novel is. Because at its heart, this novel is a novel about resistance. It's a novel about not giving up even when it feels like there's no options for you. It's about finding the part of you that can survive and keep fighting no matter what you've been through or what you've had to do to survive. It's about finding other people who can encourage you and push you on. It's about making family where you have to and finding comfort in each other in whatever ways you can. It's as much a novel about how a world like Gilead could come to be as it is a novel about how ordinary people can fight to try to bring that kind of world down. And coming up on an election year, with that fight looming, and with all the political struggles we're currently going through, with the immigrant situation, with LGBTQ and women's rights being stripped away, with people of color being attacked over and over and over again by people in authority, this is so needed right now. I personally have found it incredibly easy to become overwhelmed and hopeless right now and to basically become paralyzed because it feels like there's so much to do you don't know where to start or how to keep going and this novel to me was the push to keep going it is undoubtedly a call to action and also a message of hope while it's extremely terrifying and hard to read it is also very much a light at the end of the tunnel and a reminder that these things may not last forever as long as you don't let them. Also, if you're a writer, especially if you're a feminist writer or any kind of marginalized writer or someone who uses their writing as a form of activism to try to amplify voices that are not heard, this novel is so for you. There's a paragraph towards the end of the book that I was so overwhelmed by and inspired by. I was almost shaking. I was nearly crying. I'm very likely going to just print it out and hang it above my writing desk. I'm not going to spoil it because I want you to be able to come across and have it hit you the way it did me. But this novel is as much a love letter to storytelling and writing and activism through that as it is to women themselves. Overall, I think the novel was extremely powerful, extremely timely, and extremely needed. In my mind, it only enhances A Handmaid's Tale. It doesn't weaken the work. It doesn't betray it. It doesn't feel like a desperate clinging on to the story. It feels extremely natural and organic and it feels like 
she is just so in tune with the world and heard what all of us were asking for and gave it to us. I'm extremely grateful for this book. I'm so happy I read it. I'm so happy she put it out. I'm so happy she exists. <laughs> I highly, highly, highly recommend this book. I hope it means as much to you as it does to me. I hope it does for you what it's doing for me. I can feel it working within me already. If you've read the book, please leave a comment below and let me know what you think. I'd love to hear. I'll be back soon with another video. And in the meantime, be well and thank you so much for coming.